So it's about that time again, the time where I review the newest league for Path of Exile and talk about how amazing the game is. I just want to clarify something before diving into this video though, in the past I've had very harsh things to say about the games as a service model in light of certain companies like EA or Bethesda really using the concept improperly, but Grinding Gear Games and their free to play ARPG Path of Exile are one of the very few examples out there of a game as a service done the right way with exceptional results. Recently Chris Wilson, the CEO of Grinding Gear Games, did an hour long talk at GDC, also known as the Game Developers Conference. The title of that talk was Designing Path of Exile to be Played Forever, and it is quite possibly one of the most illuminating presentations I have ever seen in the entire games industry. Now, I won't really go in depth on the specifics or reference too many portions of that presentation because it is, after all, an hour long and there is much more to discuss than I have time for. But the basic premise of designing a game that can persist long after the vast majority of its competition has failed is something that Path of Exile has succeeded in doing. Because of this longevity and their approach to content development, the game is in a constant state of evolution, and as a result, I find it prudent to review the game with each new League update. So without further ado, let's get into Legion. In the background right now, you will mostly see some farming footage of a couple of different builds I am making that aren't quite finished yet. One is a cold damage winter orb of Frostbolt character designed to clear huge sections of the map very quickly, and the other is an experiment with some of the new and adjusted material that the new league has updated. Neither of these builds is where I would like them to be just yet, but I got very bored of my first character a lot faster than usual, so here we are. The Legion update did a number of different things, but one of the largest and most important was a complete overhaul to melee combat. Path of Exile utilizes a layered RNG system that revolves around stacking levels of randomness on top of one another to create near infinite replayability and variation. But the problem with such a system is that clear speed inevitably becomes a focus. Players with any regard for efficiency end up finding the optimal methods to kill as many monsters as they can as fast as they can, and in the past this meant that melee abilities and builds were largely ignored in a lot of circumstances. With Legion, this has been somewhat changed. Animations have gotten an overhaul, melee attacks and abilities now have the potential to strike multiple different targets, and they also added animation cancelling which makes for a more fluid experience throughout the entire game as you are no longer locked in place while finishing attacks or ability casts. All in all, the melee combat overhaul is an extremely successful rework, and while I do not believe that it has brought melee up to a competitive level with a lot of the other spells and abilities out there, it has certainly taken a massive step in the right direction. Now let's talk about the League mechanic itself. The Legion League brings an ancient war to the world of Rayclast. Trapped within monoliths spread throughout the world are soldiers of various different factions, battling against one another. They were suspended in motion until now being freed by the player. The mechanic is fairly simple. Tag a monolith, attack the monsters that spawn, thus freeing them from their frozen state, and then fight the monsters you have freed once the timer expires for big rewards. The rewards feel pretty well balanced and the Legion monoliths feel particularly well scaled for melee builds utilizing the new system. However, when you compare a melee build, even with the new format, to a high clear speed build, even one with very little investment or perfection, the difference is still quite staggering. On top of the Legion monoliths, however, there have been new skill gems added, new support gems, and new jewels to augment the extensive passive tree. One thing that seems very clear is that Legion has reverted to a more tried and true format for Path of Exile in which players are simply given monsters to kill, which results in loot. The previous league, Synthesis, required a lot of effort to engage with it. It required memories to be slotted in a maze-like nexus, which then created degrading pathways, and it was an extensive and innovative system, definitely, but the effort and the resources required to meaningfully engage with that system were a lot higher than felt comfortable. If you look back historically at Path of Exile, some of the most popular leagues and mechanics have simply revolved around tagging something or triggering an event of sorts, and then having monsters spawn that drop loot. So with that in mind, Legion puts a new spin on it, yes, much like previous leagues, but remains true to that intrinsic law of ARPGs. Kill lots of monsters, get lots of loot, rinse, repeat. Now, before going further, I do want to address something a little more broadly regarding the Path of Exile League system itself, and this feeds back into the premise of infinite replayability. The Path of Exile update cycle revolves around four yearly patches. There are smaller patches here and there for quality of life or general bug fixing, but typically speaking, there is an alternating small-big, small-big League system in place with a new League every quarter. 
This format was established a number of years ago and has a very deliberate premise. The idea is to ensure that no player ever leaves the game without a known point of re-entry. A common phenomenon in many different games is that players become bored. The same is of course true with Path of Exile as well. But the difference is, when players become bored in Path of Exile, there is a very predictable timeline in place that allows them the assurance that in a couple of months they can return to the game, at which point there will be some new skills, new mechanics, and a full economy reset. The concept of predictable economy resets accompanied by content updates and new material is a fundamental cornerstone of what Path of Exile has become. Players subconsciously crave a level playing field, but the problem is that many different games, save for the initial launch day itself, never truly obtain level playing fields ever again after that fact. The Path of Exile League system gives these entry points a well-defined schedule, and has successfully created a game where player retention is cyclical rather than steadily declining. Here is where I mention, as in every video on Path of Exile, the relative cost of cosmetics. The cosmetics in the game remain unchanged in their ludicrous pricing. They actually look phenomenal in a lot of different cases, but $30 for a weapon skin? $60 armor sets? It's ludicrous. However, with the entirety of the content remaining free to play, it is something that remains in the peripherals and will not truly detract from the game's overall experience. The microtransactions also include stash capacity and various special tabs, and this is an area that becomes a bit more complex, seeing as to truly progress through the end game, or the entirety of what the game has to offer, or high-tiered fights in general, with multiple different characters, you will almost certainly need some of the extra special tabs and a good amount of extra stash space overall. But even then, the number of hours required to reach that point for a new player far surpasses the average lifespan of a traditional $60 AAA title. And on top of that, Grinding Gear Games has a diligent policy of offering hefty discounts in their store specifically for these quality of life stash upgrades which help to lower the entry for players wishing to pursue the game in a deeper way. A lot of games in the modern industry are absolutely cowering at the thought of players feeling overwhelmed. They are terrified of their audience running into a scenario wherein they cannot progress or feel defeated and quit the game as a result. Path of Exile is the complete antithesis of such a mindset. It has been publicly expressed that the game is designed to feel daunting and punishing to new players, but with that intentional atmosphere, it simultaneously helps build anticipation and gratification when obstacles have been overcome. It's probably a mindset that a lot of different players can now identify with. Anyone that has ever played a mobile game that gave them exact arrows and markers of where to click and when will know that at a certain point, when casualization becomes too aggressive, a player's brain effectively shuts off. And you could even arrive at the end of that tutorial with literally no knowledge whatsoever of what to do or how to play because you were on autopilot during its main steps. Path of Exile takes a very different approach. The tutorial definitely exists, though it is a rudimentary guide at best, but the main focus is learning through action. Because of that emphasis, a large chunk of the player base have taken it upon themselves to create and construct community tools, outside applications for trade, building, and information that bridge the gap between a game so complex as to push players away and a world so complex it can be marveled at and consume dozens, hundreds, or easily thousands of hours. Path of Exile excels within the industry for a number of reasons, but one standout is its use of procedural generation. Levels are often replicas of one another with variations on river, road, or building placement, but aesthetically the environment has been altered with effects that mask that similarity and let the player experience something similar or nearly identical identical to what was previously played while still enjoying it without that oppressive feeling of retreading past ground. The development tools for this procedural generation are also entirely produced in-house, which is not something that many modern games can replicate. All too often developers are working with foreign engines or tools that require far too much time to simply understand, let alone create the content with. Path of Exile has streamlined that process for everything from level architecture to enemy design and all things in between. With such an emphasis on efficiency and complexity, the world holds an amount of potential that many other games can only dream of, and as the game progressively builds off of itself, reusing past mechanics, assets, and ideas in both similar and exciting new ways, it enhances the future content while again reinforcing the idea that Path of Exile is a game designed to be played forever.
The new Legion League is quite enjoyable, though there seems to be a far superior level of reward given to particular high clear speed skills and abilities, which are the direct opposite of the reworked melee combat. However, with a spread of activities so diverse, from beast arena crafting to the Atlas of Worlds, infinite procedurally generated dungeons and abyssal chasms, breached spectral worlds, syndicate strongholds, and now time-locked battling armies, the game has so many different systems, when one fails to deliver enjoyment, there are 10 more waiting to take its place, and there are four more coming like clockwork every single year. Very few games possess the reliability that Path of Exile has managed to build, and with every passing league, the foundation becomes stronger and the potential rises. The format of the game might not be for everyone, some players are not that enthusiastic about grind-based ARPGs, that's true, but for anyone with even a fleeting desire to check it out, do not hesitate. And also don't hesitate to go back to it, because now is a perfect point of entry with more just like it down the line. That's it for today though. Legion is a very strong league with some amazing reworked mechanics, and it is well worth your time if you bear any passion for the genre. There are links down below if you want to support the channel, as well as this newest piece of merchandise. I realized I've not been doing any celebratory things as the channel grew. I never even did something for 100k subs, so this is our 250k quarter million subscriber t-shirt, if you will, which was passed, I guess, about two weeks ago. But I'll cut it there, and I'll stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.